<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at something pretty cool here for the PlayStation 4 and actually revisiting something that I have even covered before, but with a little bit of something different and something pretty worthwhile here. Now, this is going to be showing you if you have a jailbroken PlayStation 4, how you can play PSP games on it. Now, this is not going to be through Linux or any of those other means. This is actually going to be games that you can install like this, such as with the Sega Saturn emulator or or even the PlayStation 2 emulator or the PS1 emulator. It's going to be in a similar fashion, but this time around with PSP. Now, I am saying I'm revisiting this because I have made a video about this a few years ago using a different tool. However, there is a new tool that has come out by the name of PSP FPKG from developer Jabu that ends up making this pretty easy to do. Uh, it's similar to some of the other tools I have covered from the same developer such as PSX FPKG and of course PS2 FPKG. So this will be the same style, fashion, and ease. But the reason why this is worth revisiting is because there is a new emulator, like a new actual emulator for the PSP that is being utilized here, which seems to be more promising and has some more configuration abilities as well as compatibility uh, much greater than the previous emulator that we have seen. So for this, you are going to need a few things. You'll of course need your compatible jailbroken PlayStation 4. This is going to assume that you are already running Gold Hen or any form of Hen on here so you can install a fake package file. This is also going to require a way to get all the files over using something like a USB drive, your PSP games backed up, as well as a computer to download and run PSP FPKG. With all that being said, let's go ahead and move over to our PC to get this all started. I'm going to have several links down below in the description of the video, but the first one is going to be the PSX Place release thread for PSP FPKG. It's currently in revision 1.0.1 at the time of recording this, and thankfully it's pretty simple to use if you've used any of the other tools that Chabu has developed. All you need to do is go down here to download just the latest release and then download it somewhere you can easily find it. Now, I'm also going to link a couple of other pages for a PSP compatibility list. The first one is over on PSX Place, where if you have an account there or if you don't, it would be nice to make one. But over here, you can post the games that you have tried with this emulator, any other settings you might have tried, and really anything else on here, just really your findings and stuff. And you might see here, I am going to give a heads up that the emulator's compatibility is much better than we've seen for the past few years, but it is still quite limited. For example, here you can see several of these games, Crash's game, Black Screen works till the menu, uh, Street Fighter Alpha 3 Max seems to be working but no auto saves, but there are some promising results here from the Third Birthday and Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars, so I figured I would try these two out. There's also the emulator compatibility list, which is over on the PS Dev Wiki. So this is about the same here, and this has been maintained for longer, but you might see some different results on this as well too. Although do keep in mind that results here so early in this, is going to kind of be a mix of the old emulator and the new emulator. So even what I'm saying here is with any types of games that you try out, it would be helpful to the community to update one or preferably even both these lists with your findings on here. Either way, we should have a few things here downloaded. First of all, it's going to be PSP FPKG in a 7-zip archive, as well as the games that we're going to be using. Now, I do have these games and I have backed them up. If you do have PSP hardware, I do also have a video Video that I will link in the description showing how to back up your games and such. But for our games here, I do also have some intended images for the icon as well as the background, which you can just grab off of Google, and the ISO themselves. This is also important to note because when you back up your PSP games, these do have to be in ISO format, so just that untouched disk format when you dump it. If it's in CSO, you are going to have to decompress that using something like UMD Gin to get it back to ISO format. However, this is a 7-zip archive, so it will require that. In order to extract this, you can just right click on PSP FPKG, 7-zip, 
and extract it right here. It should give you a new file and a folder. The first is the readme, which we can check out here. I would recommend giving this a quick once over because it is pretty quick and easy to go through on here and just get familiar with this. Although again, thankfully this application is pretty easy to use and set up. The next thing is going to be the PSP FPKG folder. Inside of here, you'll want to find the PSP FPKG executable and run this. So it should look a little something like this. We can check out the general section and the about section with all the things and such here, but this is thankfully pretty simple to get up and running. Go back over to general and first we need to pick our game so click on select and find whichever iso you'd like to use for your psp game in my case i'm going to use the third birthday so go ahead and grab that now this is pretty cool it ends up grabbing the default icon 0.png as well as the np title for this and the title that the iso actually has now for the icon and splash screen you can keep these the same as default i'm going to keep the icon 0 the same here but for the splash screen i'm going to click on select and grab the thumbnail that i grabbed here for this so there we go. There's also custom configurations that you can use here. And if you click on select, it's looking for a custom text configuration. Now, unfortunately, at this time, it seems like this is early on enough that it doesn't seem like there's any custom configurations out in the wild yet. But I'm sure in the future, there will be some recommended text files that you can pair up with these. It'd be about the same thing. If you have a custom config, you just click on select, you find your config file, open it and add it there. Either way, once we have this all set up the way we like it, we can click on Create FPKG. Once you pick somewhere you want to save it, go ahead and wait a bit. It might look like it's frozen, but just let it do its thing. It is working in the background. And there we go. Once it's done, it will say Package Created. Click on OK. And that's about all you need to do here. I'm going to close out of this, grab my third birthday folder, and wherever you save this to, you should have a PKG file just like that. Now I am going to do this one more time with Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars, and I'll even change some of the stuff here. So Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars, that should be fine. I'm going to grab my own icon, grab my own splash screen, and create a custom FPKG. So there we go, that's been completed as well. Close out of this, and just like before, check this out we have the original ISO there and I decided to save it in the same folder so we have the package that is a little bit compressed here as well too now to transfer these over if you have messed with package files at all on the PlayStation 4 you should be pretty familiar with this but of course you'll need your USB flash drive that you're using make sure it is either XFAT or FAT32 in format if it has not been formatted that way you'll just want to back up any data you care about right click format select your file system, allocation size, hit OK, and that's about all there is to it. So for here, we're just going to grab our package files. So I'm going to copy this out, paste it into the root folder, let that copy over, and I'm going to do the same thing for the third birthday. So copy this out and paste it into the root and just let these transfer over. And now with this almost done copied over, there we go. We have both of our files in place. So I'm just going to go back here, right click, safely eject the USB drive and take it over to the PS4. Over at the PlayStation 4, of course, make sure you have already run preferably Gold Hen as that's what most people are going to be using. Then go over to your settings, make sure you have plugged in your USB drive. We can go up to Gold Hen, Package Installer, and here is our package files. So I'm just going to go ahead and install all of them to make it easy enough there, and it will install both games. And here we go, we have the both of them installed, and if we come back over here, check this out. We do have two new games here. We have the third birthday, and of course, Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars. Now the next thing you can do to enjoy yourself is really just fire one of these up and play them. As you can see, this is the custom splash screen I put in here. And let's give this a shot. Now it does give us this piece of information here because you do have the left side of this for select and the right side for start. You can go ahead and press start to boot this up. Now as you can see even here this isn't a perfect experience. We do have the first cutscene playing and it is choppy here unfortunately but it does look like the game is working and let's see I'll even skip past that. Let's see we do have the menu system working here so mixing that up but there we go new game. Uh, sure, easy. 
let's go ahead and try this. So here we're just right at the beginning, but as you can see, the cutscenes do seem to have some issues, but so far this is looking pretty good, and I'm pretty astonished at how good this looks here overall. Now, because this is a new PSP emulator, check this out, there's also some additional features that you can use as well too. So you press the options button on your controller, check this out, it brings this up, and you kind of have this uh, way to scrub back and replay some of the most recent gameplay. So if you want to come right back here to the beginning and rewind, you can say yes and check this out, it rewinds like that. We can also check out a few other options. If we go back over there, we can also create a quick save by hitting the triangle button, and it kind of creates a quick save, well, I guess save state of sorts on that. And if I do want to go in and load that, check that out we can load that up as well too easily enough awesome if we go back in here let's see and that's about it for that load and save of course but even if we go into the settings we do have the controls available now we also have video options here which you can change the aspect ratio so for example if we want to change it to square pixels let's give that a shot that's not looking the best here in my opinion, so we can change this back of course to, let's see, something else, how about 4.3 for 16.9. We have this as well too, all right. Even going back here, if we make it one to one, I'm just curious about this. Yeah, so maybe these settings won't be the best options for gameplay on here for, I guess, a typical game like this, but maybe for some other types of games you might play on the PSP, those could work out as well too. Maybe just not the best for the third birthday. Uh, also, we can go back over to settings, and the last thing here is the visual presets. So we do have the default one, but it looks like we also have Retro Classic, which let's give this a shot, and it gives it some, uh, looks like scan lines on here kind of like you're looking at this on a CRT of sorts. Uh, I guess this will really depend if you prefer this look or not. Some people might, some people might not. I'm not a fan of it personally, but even if we go back here, we have one more we can check out, which would be the modern look. And let's see on this. This one looks like it actually cleans it up a bit on here, which is pretty cool to see. So. This is actually, this is a lot further than the previous emulator that we had for sure, and definitely nice to have all those additional options on here. Now I am at the beginning here of Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars, and I have enabled the modern filter on this, and I have to say this looks pretty remarkably good as well too. Like, yet again, even though we're just at the beginning, I'm pretty fascinated by this and I'm pretty impressed at what we're seeing. Of course, we do have the same features as before with rewind, quick save, and all of that. But those are some really nice options that are available here in this new emulator. So definitely worthwhile and definitely worth trying if you do have some PSP games that you want to mess around with here. It looks like this one does have some stuttering, but overall it actually seems to be pretty playable for the most part, and I have no doubt that as the community really works on this further, that we are going to see some nicer improvements, configurations, and just really awesome discoveries with this. Either way, that is about it for this video here. I hope you all enjoyed it, I hope it did help out, and I hope you all have some fun getting a bit more usage out of your PlayStation 4 with some pretty cool PSP FPKGs on here. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for watching everyone, if you enjoyed this video a like would absolutely be appreciated, and if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well too.